What's up everyone? I've been sick for the past couple of days. For the first time in years, I've been like physically sick. I haven't been able to do anything other than spend time with my cats and play a lot of Elden Ring. But now that I can finally talk again, even though you can probably still hear it a little bit in my voice, I wanted to talk about the books that I read this year, all the manga, manhwa, comic books, books, because if you don't know anything about me, because I feel like I don't really talk too much about myself, I like to read. So I thought I would go over everything I read this year because my sister showed me this app called Book Murray where I can like actually keep track of what I read this year because I can never remember and it always bothers me. Not sponsored by the way, so please subscribe. So yeah, I'm just gonna do a quick overview of my thoughts, nothing too deep honestly, just what pops out of my head. I don't have anything planned, I'm just gonna wing it. So I'm gonna start with the manga that I read this year. I've never read manga before this year, so this is a pretty big deal to me. If you don't know what that is, it's just Japanese comics basically, it's what anime is based off of. So the first manga I ever read was Demon Slayer. So that's what we read this year, all 23 volumes. My thoughts overall, it was very fun. Obviously, if you know it, all the characters are very tropey, so they're all very fun and unique. And honestly, I like all of the characters. There's not a character I don't like, except for maybe Zenitsu, which if you know him, you understand, but it's a lot easier to read him than it is to listen to him in the show. But anyway, I had to read it because everyone was like saying that the Smordsmith Village, you know, battle was gonna be the best battle ever so I had to read it and you know they were wrong right the best is Tengen's fight in all of anime actually changed my mind but even the second best fight in this book is like later on so I don't know what they're talking about but anyway the, the the story's mid everyone knows like the demon slayer story is not too like deep complicated slain demons so it doesn't get a lot of credit for that the panels were pretty like basic honestly and a lot of times I couldn't really f follow some of the fighting like I didn't know what was going on I'd like reread it and be like who who just hit who or like you know what's going on but overall when the story ended not the epilogue but just like when the story ended mostly it just gave me a very like fulfilling feeling kind of like when I watched Lord of the Rings and like they went on the whole journey and they came home and you have this like happiness when they get back this story gave me that and I feel like I don't get that feeling a lot so I really loved that about it to be honest so overall I'm just gonna give it a uh, six upper rank demon eyes all right, so future Brandon here, I just listened to myself do this video and my rankings are so harsh on this. Like, do not listen to my rankings, honestly. Like, I was just throwing stuff out there. I'm the kind of person who will never rank anything a nine or 10. So even though everything is gonna sound low, like I absolutely love them. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Next, we're gonna be talking about Hell's Paradise. So this just got a season la this year, last year? I don't remember. Um, so it got adapted finally, um, 13 volumes, it's story's done. And this one was, this one was honestly interesting, right? Like the story, it's, it's kind of fun, right? You go to an island, try to find the elixir of life. Everything there is trying to kill you. You know, like that, that's kind of fun, but there's like some intricacies with like female empowerment in there because of the time period it's set in and like the samurai code of conduct and like following rules. Um, to despite you know the morality of the decisions or what you're doing so there's there's some complexity to it but overall like i wasn't super moved by the story and honestly none of the characters in the book are going to be like your favorite character ever or anything like that but i think the thing that moved me the most about this was the characters like they weren't just like you know i talked about how demon slayer everyone's like a trope and everyone's enjoyable whatever because they're like so wild and quirky in hell's paradise everyone feels like a real person like the choices they make feel very real and grounded and everyone has like this depth that you can just like understand you, you can kind of like relate to every single character from on, in a deeper level i would say so i think that was the main thing about this this series that i really enjoyed so for that and honestly the artwork is it's pretty cool like the environment backgrounds especially are really cool the fighting's a little bit easier to follow than demon slayer so yeah overall i'm gonna give this eh, we'll just give it like a 6.5 tau next we got summertime rendering there's six volumes of this i believe basically this dude goes back home and he dies and then starts the day over and is kind of in that cycle and he's trying to figure out what the hell is going on this one was 
a very fun read. It's, it's I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. I, I didn't really know other it was kind of like beachy vibes so I was like ooh this is gonna be like maybe a slice of life or something um, no it's actually a horror mystery <laughs> story and and actually like really loved it we kept you guessing the whole time it was very graphic and bloody and it was kind of like if you like those things where like you know you like die and then repeat and you kind of figure it out from there this is for you I really love that that style of of storytelling I guess it was very fun just just trying to figure everything out I will say there was a lot of like ups and downs to the story like some of the books were like like I was like it was like peak you know what I mean and then other books was kind of like boring kind of lowly um, then it would go up so there, there was a lot of this in the writing the pacing maybe so I didn't really care for that but overall again like I love that it was horror I love that it kept me guessing and I kept trying to figure everything out so that was probably my favorite part about it and then also the end it gave me the emotion I, I, and I feel like I'm ranking these off off of emotions but it almost made me want to cry happy tears maybe it's because like this crazy journey that everyone went through but it just made me it just it just like really sparked something inside my cold-hearted chest because I don't I don't feel things a lot um, overall I'm probably just going to go ahead and give it a, another let's go with 6.5 again I, I don't know why these rankings are slow so low I just feel like there's so many more things you know what I'm just gonna give it a seven let's just give it a seven because I love the concept of the whole thing we're gonna give it seven extra lives I don't know why like I, I feel like the rankings I'm giving these are sound pretty bad but honestly like I love them like I loved reading these things I enjoyed them so much um, but because of that I'll just go ahead and put out something that I did super enjoy and that will be chainsaw man Basically, there's like demons out there and there's people who fight the demons, basically. And there's people who are like actually demons. And then there's people who can like turn into the demons. And then there's fiends and all these other cool things and making contracts with demons. Now, I read the first 11 volumes of Chainsaw Man. That's the first part. I haven't read any of the second part yet because it's not done and I hate waiting three months for each volume. So I just read the first story arc and it blew me out of the water. I watched the anime, they made an anime, one season, and like, I honestly didn't think too much about it, you know? Like, Aki's cool, right? Calm. But yeah, the story just blew me out of the water. Honestly, it is probably the most enjoyable manga that I have read this year. I just gonna throw it out there, like, I mean, in general, because I've only read manga this year, so it's, it's the most enjoyable manga that I have read. Is it the best? We'll get to that, but it is, by far, hands down, it is like the most enjoyable thing, right? Like the dynamic between Denji and Power, so much better in the manga. Like it just, I was laughing. Denji was so hilarious. Like it would just, he would say the most off the cuff things. I'd be laughing out loud while I was reading. Loved it. Um, the story, you know, the story does get a little bit confusing towards the end, I'll admit, to try to like piece everything together, but I did not see the ending coming. Plot armor doesn't exist in this thing. And so I just absolutely like, I loved it like it, it ticked off like so much action there was blood there was like denji's whole motivation is just to touch boobies um what's more relatable than that i mean so yeah overall you know i didn't see the ending coming all that like it was just great i'm giving this a hundred pochitas because i absolutely loved it so far i've pretty much talked about like action manga other than maybe summertime rending but that still has a decent amount of action in it so we're gonna go ahead and switch it up and talk about a little slice of life called sakurai san wants to be noticed and there's four volumes of this wasn't much i kind of just like bought it off a whim like people were saying they really liked it and since it was only four i was like that's a good introduction to like reading slice of life you know i like watching it but i'm like how am i gonna like reading it so i went ahead and bought these and read them and it was okay you know what i'll, I'll admit i didn't care for it too much there were parts of it that were kind of cute but a lot of it felt like the same thing you know as sakura wants to be noticed so that's i mean that's what happens all four volumes is she wants to be noticed and the dude's not noticing her and uh or he is just not saying it in that sense it was kind of the same thing but it was still cute there were still cute moments there weren't like direction bubbles when people were talking so a lot of times i had no idea who the hell was speaking that drove me crazy um but there was some really good full panel artwork when he really like did notice her but you know what do you expect you know kids in school are shy and don't like talk about their feelings so it, it makes sense but yeah I, i'm gonna give this one like a five I don't even know, like, how should I rate this one? We're just going to give it five hearts. We'll go with that. So next we got the Holy Grail of manga, High School of the Dead, two, vo wait, two volumes. 
yeah, I can't really show much more than this. It's pretty much edited on the cover, because uh, if I show you the slip cover or anything like that, like I'm just gonna have to blur it out and I can't show it. Um, Cause I'm gonna be honest, it's pretty much just smut, uh, straight up, but we love that. It's basically about a bunch of high schoolers during the zombie apocalypse outbreak and what they do to survive. Uh, I watched the anime first, but anyway, like they only did one season because the author died and the story never got finished, so they just didn't make any more. But I knew that there was more books than the story, so I went ahead and got them to read them to see how the story progressed. Because honestly, like it was just it was a very fun watch. And so I decided to read it. And the second book honestly wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be. But it was still fun. I think the characters had a lot more depth to them, honestly. There actually wasn't as much sexualization as there is in the animation. So the thing that I loved about this, though, is one, it was in full color. It was very clean, maybe because it's like reprinted. I'm not sure. I haven't read the originals. But the biggest thing is the way that the, the panel layout is. Like, the panels are constantly changing. It's like if you read Demon Slayer or something else, it's pretty much just like, Boop, 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 boop. You know, it's very just like four squares or, you know, occasionally it switches it up, but it's like, it's very generic. With High School of the Dead, like, I mean, there was like diagonal frame breaks. People were breaking frames all the time. Like the whole layout, the flow was, it felt different. Like every page felt different. It, it just, it just kept the whole thing so interesting and so like fresh. And I haven't read anything like that throughout even my comic books. But yeah, I, I do, I did, I did enjoy it. And I think that was, that was great. It's just fun to read. I think it's deeper than people think about it. Cause I think people just think about the sexualness of this uh, series, but I do think the characters have to make some hard decisions and it, it definitely explores some of those things that would happen in an apocalypse. So I really like that. I'm gonna go ahead and give this, mm, we're gonna give it seven of Hagao faces. So next we're gonna go with the classic Soul Eater series. I read 12 of these re-perfect editions. Um, the 13th one is coming out in January and then the 14th one is the last one, which will be three months after that. So I didn't get to read all of it. I have watched the anime, but yeah, I, I'm caught up if you will to the book release other than the fact, but it's a reprint. So I think, yeah. I absolutely loved this. Uh, this was one of like the first animes I watched, so I was excited to read this, and it didn't let me down, honestly. I absolutely have enjoyed it so much. It has always been my favorite art design out of anything I've seen, and reading it, it fulfills it. It's very gothic style. It's very like a uh, keyhole, like wide angle lens. All the buildings are turns. All the characters are very tropey. Like, you know, Demon Slayer has tropey characters. Like, Soul Eater has even more tropey characters. Like extreme like everyone is so unique and i i absolutely love it except for excalibur he can go f himself but anyway solier is basically about people who are meisters and they fight with their weapons and they collect souls of um bad people i guess you would say and then they also try to collect witches souls there's a lot of like magic so yeah overall this one had also really good art style I loved it like all whenever there was so much like intensity or something the whole like style flips and everything instead of being like white with black shading things start becoming blacker with like white shading i don't know like you can really just feel the intensity some pages are like almost all black and i you just like you feel the weight of the drawings in that and i i love that there was a lot of frame breaks a lot of like it wasn't as good as high school then in terms of panel layout but this is probably the second best i've seen in terms of panel layout also the humor in this is amazing it's not the same as chainsaw man but it's just funny because you put these trope characters in situations and the way they play out is just hilarious. Like literally all these characters taking a test and just like the the calamity that unfolds is just hilarious. I'm laughing out loud. And there were some fights that also hyped me up. Another thing I really like about this series is that there's a lot going on. It's not just like, okay, here's the good guys, here's the bad guys, they fight. It was kind of like, you know, here's, here's the good guys. And then there's like this faction of people. Then there's this faction of people and there's this faction of people. And they're all like fighting each other because they're all trying to achieve something different, but they all need the same stuff. So it was very cool um, to see all that interact because it wasn't always just like, you know, these two teams fighting each other. It added a lot more dynam dynamic, dynamicness. I don't know. It made the story more dynamic. Uh, so I really enjoyed that. We're going to give this one eight souls. All right, that is all the manga I have read this year. So now we are on to the manhua I read this year, and that would be solo leveling. If you don't know what manhua is, that is basically just Korean version 
of comics, um, kind of like manga's Japanese version of comics. You know, I actually read volumes five, six, and seven this year. I read the other ones last year. Um, anyway, solo leveling is about um, a guy. It's kind of like it's 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 almost an isekai, but it's doesn't it's not really it's not technically an isekai, but it's kind of an isekai because the dude's like leveling up and stuff, and he's kind of got a player board. Anyway, it's about this dude who's like the worst, the worst dude at doing dungeon stuff, right? He's so weak. He's like the weakest, the weakest adventure or whatever. Um, and basically he finds a way to level up and becomes like literally OP busted. I absolutely love this. Honestly, I told you that Chainsaw Man is the most enjoyable thing I've read. However, I think solo leveling is probably the best thing ever. Like my, like my favorite thing to read. Every time I read it, I just get so hyped. Every time this dude says arise, I get chills down my spine. If you know, you know, but like it's, there's so much badass in this. It's getting an anime uh, starting in January, I believe. And I am so stoked. I don't know if they're gonna get into any of the badass stuff in uh, season one, but let me tell you, this this manhua is something everyone should read if you're into like action shonen stuff. So I will be giving this one also a hundred arises, which again, you won't know unless you read what that means, but it's good. Next, we're gonna move on to comic books. I read Flashpoint again, and it was just as good um, it actually almost made me cry at the end. Um, I read it because obviously like, you know, the movie Flash movie was supposed to be based off of Flashpoint. So I was really like rereading it, hoping to just know what to expect and hope from the movie. And the movie took like nothing obviously from the comic book. And it makes me super sad because I just want to see a live adaptation. We had that good animated adaptation and they, they missed the whole switcheroo in the Flashpoint universe of Batman's mom and dad. Or who is Batman? Or who is Batman? And who is the Joker? I guess you should say. Anyway, there's so much to explore there, and they've. I'm, this isn't a review on the movie. I'm talking about that. Okay. Anyway, the comic book is great. That's all I'm gonna say. We're gonna give this. Actually, you know what? We're gonna give Flashpoint nine. What does he run into? The. We're gonna give this one nine Speed Forces. Next, we have Shazam, and the Seven Magic Lands. It's a pretty thick one. Uh, this is my first Shazam book that I read, and, you know, it was okay. I'm gonna be completely honest. I do not remember anything about this. Uh, so that's how memorable it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one three Captain Marvels because it wasn't bad, but I honestly just like don't remember anything. Next, we have Teen Titans Academy. There's two of these, at least the hardcover ones. I read them basically because Red X is in them and we don't see them enough. So I read them because of that and I've read a lot of negative reviews about it before I bought it. So I was hesitant to buy them. Um, because people said there's too many characters, things like that. And you know what? I liked it because it was a, it was a whodunit, like, right? No one knows the identity of, of who Red X is. And they're at this Teen Titans Academy. So it's a bunch of like younger people training to be Titans. And so there's a bigger roster because it's at a school and stuff. Um, and you're just trying to figure out who Red X is because Red X keeps coming in and doing stuff. And you're like trying to figure out, you know, it's someone at the school. You're like, come on, who is it? Things like that. I mean, I honestly enjoyed it. Yeah, it's not like the best thing I've ever read, but I love whodunits. That's just like my cup of tea. So if you're into that, you know, go for it. I'm going to give this one. Hmm five red X's. No, four, 4.5 red X's. All right. I also read the first omnibus of mind management. I don't have it because I borrowed it from my friend. He had me read it. And this one was a very interesting read. It was very different from what I expected or I don't even know what I expected to be honest. He just gave it to me. He was like, here, read this. I'm like, bet I did. And it was so different. It was kind of about basically if like the government kind of thing had like superpowers. Um, but they're not like superheroes. It's, it's the, they kind of use them differently, I guess, in a more realistic way. If you're trying to like keep it under wraps, maybe. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit fantasy there. Um, it was a very interesting story. It just honestly wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't really like the art style, to be honest. If my friend doesn't give me the other omnibuses, I'm probably going to be okay with never reading them, to be honest. But like, it was very unique and it was very interesting. And it is pretty highly acclaimed, I believe. Like, I think a lot of people really do enjoy it. So if you want something a little bit different out of the box, I would definitely suggest it. But for me, I'm going to give it, I don't know. I'll just, I'm going to give it like a four, five, I'll give it like a 4.5 brains. Now we are going to go into the books that I read this year. First off on my vacation, uh, on my cruise, I read 
reread, I should say, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief because I was excited for the TV show coming out. I wanted to reread them, uh, my favorite book series, uh, and I was uh, blown away by it again. I've read this book a lot growing up and it's been a while since I've read it and I read all of Rick's books and honestly, I'm gonna be completely honest, I've been getting a little bit of like fatigue on his stuff, kind of like Marvel fatigue, you know? I read all his books and I love them, but they all are kind of like feeling the exact same, you know, that are they just feels the exact same, same way Marvel movies are like the same story. It's like, I kind of felt fatigued. Um, like all the characters kind of feel the same, kind of quirky, yet, uh, like, you know, and his writing style has been like consistent throughout all these books. Uh, I don't know, like I was just kind of getting fatigued, like they're still enjoyable, but like it's, it's kind of fatiguing. Um, so going back to this, I was like, man, I don't know how this is going to be. His writing style is totally different back then. Um, the characters are totally different than how he writes them now. And it was just like this breath of fresh air that I think I needed from his writing uh, to put me back on and interested in this stuff. So again, I love this story. It's about gods and demigods and uh, Greek mythology. So if you're into that, definitely give it a watch, read. Give the TV show a watch. It's dropping December this month. So depending on when I get this video out. So yeah, it's good. I am going to go ahead and give this one nine minotaur horns. Speaking of Rick, I actually didn't get this Book Marie app until like April or something. So I can't remember if I read Daughter of the Deep in December of last year or January of this year. So I'm just going to talk about it. Uh, Daughter of the Deep's kind of just like a, a play on 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Is that, is that the book? So it's kind of just like more like mm, kind of exploring that world, um, expanding on it, making it more kid friendly. I don't know. I've never actually seen the original thing so I don't even know what it's really about but anyway this kind of integrates with it and kind of expands on it and has fun with it and it was enjoyable uh it's not my favorite thing it was a little bit different for him but it still kind of felt the same as his other books so it was it was good that's all I got to say about it I'll give it 6.5 fishes under the sea or something I don't know all right so next I read books four five six and seven of the chronicles of Nick series um, the other ones I read previous in the previous year, but yeah, I read four through what I say four five six seven and eight um, This year this is just kind of like a dude who's kind of like, you know, got a bunch of power He's kind of like the chosen one if you will um, And it's kind of got to deal with like demons and a whole bunch of mythologies and like all this stuff going on So if you're into like fantasy, you might like it, but honestly, I'm just gonna say right now uh, I just, I enjoyed the beginning of this series, right? Like maybe like one through three, one through four. It was enjoyable, but these last parts of the series, it was just a little too much for me. There was so much like lore that wasn't explained. I was just getting hit with shit. And I just like couldn't keep track of what was going on. I was confused a lot of times. And then finally, just like in the, in the main story, if you will, like I finished it and like the whole like big bad, the whole thing they were like going against this whole time, like it wasn't even like resolved, I guess. And I guess when I looked into it, this is like, I guess a prequel series to some other series the author wrote like a long time ago. And so like, I didn't know that, I guess. So yeah, I just felt like totally robbed because I felt like nothing was resolved. And there's like 16 books in the other series. And I'm like, I, I'm i like not even touching that. So I kind of, I enjoyed the beginning of this series, but like, I don't know, like in the end, it just kind of fell off for me, especially not being finished or whatever. And like, and having to read a whole nother thing. I don't know. I'm just gonna go ahead and give this one three zombies as well. So yeah, that is all the stuff that I have read this year. Uh, I'm taking a break right now because I'm playing Elden Ring and that's literally a time suck. But once the new year starts, I got a whole bunch more stuff to read. My manga collection's like, boom, getting full. I got some books I need to read. Um, so yeah, I'm excited and if, and maybe I'll do this again next year. I don't know. Uh, I enjoy just discussing things because I don't really have anyone to talk to about reading manga with necessarily. So it is enjoyable to just spew information out across the internet. So thank you for coming to my TED talk and I will see you guys next time.